Praise God. And that was righteousness. Righteousness is an act of doing what is lawful, fair, just, and morally good. That's righteousness. Literally meaning. Say righteousness is an act of doing what is lawful, fair, just, and morally good. But to thirst and hunger after righteousness, to thirst and hunger after righteousness means the act of being anxious and being anxious and ready to do what is lawful, fair, just, and morally good in the sight of God with the aim of pleasing Him and giving Him all glory. I'll say it again. Task or hunger and tasting after righteousness means the act of being anxious and ready to do what is lawful, fair, just, and morally good in the sight of God. Not the sight of man. Are you listening to me? In the sight of God. With the aim of pleasing him, God, not man. And giving him all glory, not man. So, whatever you are doing for the Lord, your desire will be what? You will be looking forward every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year. Your desire will be to do what is fair, what is lawful, what is morally good in the sight of God with the aim that you want to please Him and everything that is happening in your life, either good or bad, you give Him the glory. Amen. Amen. Now I want to look at two kinds of righteousness. Of course, we know one will be self-righteousness and then the other will be God's righteousness. Now, the righteousness we are talking about, that's why the definition did not, the, the, the definition is not saying doing things in the sight of man. Because if you are morally good in the sight of man and not in the sight of God, that is your own righteousness. You know, there are so many people today, they are very good. I was talking with somebody some months back. As we were discussing, I was trying to ask the person that, um, have you considered Jesus? I was trying to ask, have you considered Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior? He said, well, uh, I believe is quite different from my own. In the sense that in our own belief, in our own, uh, what they call them, uh, religion, they taught them that uh, they, should be, they should be good, they should be nice to people, they should just be nice, nice to everybody, they should be happy, they should be joyful, make sure they don't offend anybody, live happily, that if they maintain that lifestyle, you know, continually, they maintain that lifestyle continually, they are going to the kingdom of God. But an I told her, I said, it is not possible. I said, what you are doing, that is what we are calling self-righteousness. You want to get to God's kingdom by your own strength. And so you want to do everything right in the sight of man. Please, I may not have explained it like this to her, but I'm just trying what I was trying to pass across to the, to the lady. What you have tried to do is to make sure you are good in the sight of God, I mean in the sight of men. I said, well, that is very good anyway, that's very good to be, you, know, you don't offend somebody, you want to make everybody to be happy, you want to be joyful, you want to, because if you see her, she's always smiling, this and that, that's very nice. I said, that is good. I said, but uh, you need one thing. The Bible told me, as I was telling her, that you cannot get to the kingdom of God except through Jesus Christ. 
He said, yes, they taught her about Jesus Christ when she was in primary, is it primary school, secondary school, this and that. She believed that Jesus Christ is the Lord. I said, but you have not taken him as your Lord and Savior. Ah, he said, well, um, she did not accept. On the long, the call is long story short. She did not accept. Not that she denied that Jesus Christ was the son of Mary, or so on and so forth. All she, she learned about Jesus Christ. She believed them, but she did not on the long run surrender life to Jesus Christ. Because she had been told through her religion that if they do all these things, they will attend kingdom. But I told her, before she left, before she left my office, I told her, I said, listen, I've told you now. The Bible says, John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus Christ said, and the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. I've told you, I left her to our own decision. Because Christianity don't impose, we don't impose our belief. We can only do what? Persuade you. We can only do what? Plead with you. Self-righteousness is one kind of righteousness which is known as man's righteousness, self-righteousness, man's righteousness, which involves giving glory to oneself. I mean, I try. It's, 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 it, it, the, 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 I've not been seeing lizard yet. The country where I came from, lizard, when the lizard climbs up and then mistakenly falls on the floor, on the ground, you see the lizard, nothing is said. So people in my area, they, are, they believe that. The lizard is saying that if nobody praised me that I climbed that top and I fell, I am praising myself. That's why he nods his head. I am praising myself. If you don't praise me, I praise myself. That is self-righteousness. Doing what is right in your in, in I mean what, what doing what is right in your own sight, in your own mindset. Example of self-righteousness can be found. In the book of Luke chapter 5, the Pharisees. Luke chapter 5. I'm going to let us read it. Luke chapter 5 about the Pharisees. Luke, the book of Luke chapter 5, from verse 27 to 32. Luke chapter 5. Example of self-righteousness. Self-righteousness. I'm going to read verse 27. 27 to 32. Now listen carefully. And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting in the receipt of custom, and he said unto him, Follow me. And he left up, rose up, and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house, and there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them, but their, their scribes and Pharisees murmured against the disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answered and said unto them, They that are old need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but, the, but sinners toward repentance. I came not to call those of you that feel you are righteous, that feels you don't have anything to do with people who are regarded as sinners. You that say you don't have anything to do with somebody who has been rejected by the society. You are righteous in your own sight. But before God, because you are rejecting the, 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 the less privileged, because you are rejecting uh, people that are not well to do or that are not learned, the illiterates, because you are neglecting them, you feel you are righteous. I have not come to call you, but I have come to call these ones that you are neglecting. These ones that you are looking, at, and looking after. So the Pharisees were self-righteous people. Because they don't mix with people. Task for letters are there, I know. Task for letters are sinners. And then in Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18, Jesus Christ went further again. Um, um, Luke chapter 18, verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9 to 14. Let me just paraphrase it here right now. Jesus Christ was talking about the story of two people that went to pray. pray. Two people that went to pray. And then one was the Pharisees and one was uh, 
uh, a, a publican. And then the Pharisee stood there and was was giving God his uh, how will you call it? His um, is it his um, credentials? He said he said uh, you see God. I am not like other people who are thieves, who are robbers, who are living any other life. I pay my tithe, I fast every week, I do this, I do that. You see, God, can you imagine me? You know, that's self worth righteousness. God, I am doing this, I am doing that. And they said they are serving God. Well, Jesus Christ making them to understand that this type of lifestyle is self righteousness. It will not lead you anywhere. But the publican stood and said, Oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 